All right, we're joined now on Bracket Breakdown by Tim O'Shea, longtime coach of Bryant, Ohio, Boston College player this year, third or fourth year with us now? I think it's my third year. Third doing year? This. Third yeah, or fourth you've year had some good it. guesses, some not yeah. so good guesses with the brackets. <laughs> uh, so one week out from Selection Sunday, obviously your eye season's over. PC's yeah. got the Big East Tournament. And Bryant, where you used to coach, yep. is in the NEC Championship Tuesday. So yeah. let's start with the Bulldogs. Uh, yeah. What a run dealing with COVID, uh, seven yeah. players on Saturday, and now on the precipice of the tournament. Well, you know, when Ron Makely made that bold decision 13 years ago to move to Division One. this was the moment they were mm -hmm. hoping for, you know, to, you know, to get to the NCAA tournament in men's basketball, which will give national attention to the school, and especially in an era where it's so competitive mm -hmm. for students. This is just the sort of shot in the arm any admissions drive would, would look yeah. for. Uh, Jared's done a great job navigating the new world of college recruiting, mm -hmm. and we were talking about this earlier, just the role of transfers, mm -hmm. fifth-year players, and he's really put together a strong roster led by a kid by the name of Peter Kiss, yep. who started at Quinnipiac, went to Rutgers, and now is at Bryant, a first-team all-conference player, and a kid that once he's done playing college basketball will certainly play professionally in Europe. Really yeah. an outstanding player. So Tuesday, we don't know how many guys are going to be out there. They had just seven on Saturday. Uh, haven't played Mount St. Mary's yet this year because right. uh, of the cancellations. But with their style of play going up and down the floor and beating Sacred Heart by 30 yesterday, sure. do you think they, they're going to win it on Tuesday? Well, you always want to have an opportunity to play at home. Now, the home court advantage, I always used to think of it as an 8 to 10 point advantage, but with mm -hmm. no fans in the yeah. stands, it's probably now down to a 2 or 3 point advantage, but still an advantage. Um, certainly, they, they, they have to like not having to travel. Yeah. They've got a very veteran team when you look at Peter Kiss is in his fifth year. Uh -huh. Elias is an older player. Yep. They have a transfer from UAB. It's played really well for them. It's in his fourth year of college. So they've got a veteran team that is going to be experienced enough to deal with the moment. So I like their chances. Yeah, that'll be cool. The Chase Athletic Center that, yeah. you know, isn't all that big. It's going to be a national TV Tuesday, right. hoping, hoping they cut down some nets. All right. Uh, Ed Cooley, your former colleague uh, when you were assistants at URI, he's got his work cut out for him. He's going to have to win yeah. four games in four days in the Big East. They've always played pretty well there. They start with DePaul in the 6-11 yeah. game. DePaul isn't all that great, so hopefully they get back. UConn looming. Um, they did knock off Villanova yesterday, so what are the chances PC makes a run here? Well, it's good to get a win going into the tournament. And if you look at the Providence season, you take back those two buzzer beater games. Yeah. I believe one was Xavier and was it Creighton was the other one. Sounds right, yeah. You know, so they, they, they can play with anybody in the league. Mm -hmm. They can, you know, beat anybody. So the idea that they can't win the tournament is not there. They could definitely win, mm -hmm. but it starts against a hungry DePaul team in the first round, and then they go from there. But um, I wouldn't count them out. Um, what is it in a topsy-turvy year sort of for the Friars? You saw they yeah. had an awful uh, second half right. against St. John's, played well in the first half against right. Villanova. They have the talent. So, like, what will it take for them to knock off a UConn or maybe eventually Villanova again? It's just one game at a time. Beat DePaul, yeah. then deal with your next opponent. Mm -hmm. And that's the only attitude you can take. One at a time. And if you're fortunate enough to advance after the first day and the second day, now you're in the semifinals. You know, and, yeah. and it's it's doable, but it's not going to be easy. But, um, you know, I, I wouldn't count them out. What do you make of URI's season? Obviously disappointing. Yeah. They got bounced in the 8-10 early. Yeah. Uh, obviously a lot of turnover with transfers this yeah. year. Fats Russell was banged up. Uh, Jeremy Shepard didn't play in the 8-10 tournament. Um, sort of a one-off year. Do you think David Cox uh, rewrites the ship next year? or what, The what, trickiest would you make thing for coaches to deal with today, the way recruiting has changed, in the sense that, transfers are playing a larger and larger role uh, in what your season becomes mm -hmm. whether you lose key guys like you or I did or you can bring some in like Bryant did mm -hmm. can make or break a season now and most transfers are eligible right away through waiver process and that's going to go away soon and the fifth years are automatically eligible right away look for you or I to make some strong moves this offseason mm -hmm. to put themselves in position to be where they want to be but obviously losing Fats Russell is a huge loss I mean yeah. really an outstanding player all right, this is going to be a, a much different NCAA tournament. Everything's in the state of Indiana, primarily right. Indianapolis. Blue Bloods like Duke, Kentucky, and yeah. uh, who else am I missing that's having a down year? Not Kansas. Well, so, well Kansas hasn't Kansas been great. Kansas hasn't been great. Carolina's come around, but they were yeah. up and down early on. So you're going to see a team like Duke potentially not make it, Kentucky <laughs> not make it, and then you have all these teams that have been in and out of COVID pauses, right. uh, not many fans. W what's this tournament going to be like? Well, I think this is a tournament that really there's going to be a lot of focus on Gonzaga. Uh -huh. 
I cannot think of a team that's going into the tournament a more heavy favorite in recent memory than Gonzaga. They're undefeated at this mm -hmm. point. Um, they've got a powerhouse team. Uh, most people believe they could run right through this thing if they don't get you know, injury or mm -hmm. uh, have a COVID pause. Um, really, uh, you know, typically you'd have Duke in the conversation, Kentucky would be in the conversation, Carolina. It's just an odd year from yeah. that standpoint. But I like Gonzaga, I like Baylor. Michigan has impressed a lot of people. Illinois has impressed mm -hmm. a lot of people. And Alabama has been a real surprise in the SEC this year with Nate Oates. I mean, they're, they're an yeah. interesting team. So a week out, your final four. We'll get an right. early well, look. Gonzaga, heavy favorite. Yeah. I like Baylor. I like Michigan. And then I think it's either Illinois or Alabama or Virginia, which won the okay. ACC again. One of those three yeah. teams, I think, could be the fourth in the final four. And technically, UVA, the last national champion yeah. since we didn't have one last year. All right, looking forward to the first of our three bracket breakdowns. So Tim will be with us the next couple weeks. Next week, we'll have the bracket, break it all down, give you our final fours. Thanks so much for joining right. us. Thanks, Johnny.